Kemper Profiler Tones and Talks, still season two and another special edition, uh, part two. We are speaking about switching, um, you know, getting all your tones uh, uh, in place and on and off uh, at the right point uh, while you're performing on stage or maybe in the studio. And um, so we're going beyond switching today because um, the Camper Profiler has, I think it's a unique feature uh, that you control, that you cannot control things that can be switched on and off, like um, light or distortion on off. You can also access the state of the ports, the volume ports, uh, mixing uh, um, delay rates and all these fancy things, which can get uh really complicated but you can use it for very simple and very convenient yeah. stuff as well because uh you wouldn't believe what you can do with just hitting one switch with a profiler because you can basically change the world with it and um thomas again is here hi thomas hi and uh, he knows everything um at least not maybe not everything but definitely more than i know about morphine and uh, he will give us some uh, great tips today. Yeah, okay. So uh, you said it, uh, you can do some weird stuff. So morphing means uh, every parameter with uh, a number. So that means uh, every knob that can be turned in effects, in amp settings, everything can be changed by morphing and you have uh, a so-called bass sound this is the sound that you uh, ha uh, get when when you switch on the rig or change change the rig this is the basic sound and you have the next level this is the morph sound so uh, if you have uh, assigned some morphing parameters then you can switch to the morph sound you can uh, not not uh, not right you can let's say move to the morph sound this can be via switch so that that's uh, set directly to the morph sound so from uh, bass sound morph sound directly but also with a pedal and uh, take the parameters in between if you maybe uh, have some some yeah effect level so most common is uh, delay level so uh, changing from a normal delay to a tempo delay with a higher mix setting. So then you can uh, adjust your mix level for the delay with a pedal. This is, uh, these are the simple things. And yeah, I'd like to show you some common stuff, uh, what's very useful and not too, uh, yeah, nerdy stuff to, to take, take over for, for some effect settings. Okay, um, I will show you my rig. Here is one crunch amp, or slightly overdriven, and some effects prepared. War pedal on A, pure booster, single delay, vintage chorus dual delay, ionosphere reverb, and uh, the only effect which is on, turned on, is uh, the natural reverb. And what you can do with morphing is this. Let's say, uh, take it with a, a dual delay. So this is set here to a tempo delay. So uh, U2 style. <laughs> Mix level uh, at a higher position and uh, set to 316 notes delay. So if I'd like to change that delay sound, I use this slider here. So this is red pedal in the heel position um, means the bass sound. Now changing to the morph sound. <laughs> And you don't hear any difference. Why? Because there's nothing set for morphing. And you will see that uh, I will start with a mix parameter and uh, to adjust that. 
once again change to the blue setting morph setting then maybe turn the mix down a little bit and let's say i will do some modulation on some flutter on some grid on and change the note value for a more stereo sound maybe the mix not too low so this is the hit maybe a little bit lower the level and now i can change between these two delay settings and the other one so nice to have but uh, yeah you don't have on stage the rig manager and you don't have the slider controlled via mouse so you need to switch that stuff uh, maybe with um, a paddle i will show you my profiler stage so here we are and here's the mission paddle which is dedicated for the morph sound so that means now i have uh Heel position is the bass sound. And then the more stereo sound. So this is, uh, yeah, one way to change these. But uh, maybe some people don't have a, a morph pedal so only only the profiler stage and there's another thing to switch um you can morph with the number switch of the rig so i will show you that again with the profiler stage so now number five is turned on and if i press this number switch again you will see it here this is the the sign for the bass sound. Now I'm at the bass sound, and I hope I can you can see it with this camera here. Now it's uh, set to the morph sound. If if the upper light is uh, is on, then it's morph sound. The 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 lower light is the bass sound, and you also have it when when you move the pedal it goes immediately immediately or mm -hmm. as you turn the pedal and um yeah as you might have seen the switching goes slow when i when i uh, press the number uh switch on on the profile <laughs> and this is, sorry no no problem this is because there is one setting that you might need to change so here in the rig manager um i'm pressing the number switch right now and you see it morph moves a little bit slowly and this is because the rise time and the fall time is set to one bar if you like to have it really fast immediately now I'm switching again, pressing the switching, the switch now. Now you get this. So uh, so this is very crucial if you like to switch some effects on and off and uh do do some uh yeah boost functions or something like that um check the rise and fall time because uh from from the factory settings it's set to one bar mm -hmm. and this is uh, definitely too slow to kick in an overdrive or a boost for for the solo so you <laughs> your one bar <laughs> lost <laughs> at starting the solo and this is not great um yeah especially the next thing you, you want to ask uh, 
at something. But, but on the other hand, it's also <clears throat> a pretty interesting thing if you um, um, just before getting into, you know, uh, the chorus, for example, if you hit it and you have one bar for the sound to go from, I don't know, clean, funky stuff to mm. murder, murderous distortion and uh, a white ocean of uh, delays and reverb, um, you could do that, then it just goes up like this. <laughs> which is pretty interesting. Um, so there are a lot of options there. Yeah, but yeah, you could use it just simple as a switch as well. Uh, it depends on which switching type you are, switching mm -hmm. guy you are. Mm -hmm. um, I have a crazy story. Um, when, when I played piano, <laughs> learned piano, um, it was, I think I have played 10 years guitar and after that I learned a little bit of piano took some piano lessons and uh, you have the sustain pedal and you need to press the sustain pedal after you have uh, pressed the chord so bang pressing and I was always used to, to press the pedal before playing the chord <laughs> so the, the piano teacher said always hey your guitar players are nuts totally nuts <laughs> and so so for me it would be uh totally confusing uh pressing the solo button one bar before the solo starts so it's i'm i'm really uh, on that pressing mm -hmm. and and in time on on the one <laughs> but it's uh yeah you you've never know each each uh, guitar player is different and you you might so for the for the uh, piano players who learn guitar maybe it would be will be good that they uh, press before then <laughs> okay um another thing what we said about solo um rig manager here we are i will load the rig again and something what I really like to do in my live settings of stage uh, performances is having the amp volume boosted by morphing. So you see, there is uh, nothing again, nothing from uh, morphing set. Amp volume is at zero dB. Now changing to the morph sound and take a boost from for about 3 dB. So that means bass sound and the louder solo sound. And don't forget rise time fall time at zero. So mm -hmm can switch solo rhythm easy stuff and uh, just for for information if there are blue and red dots on a module or amp cabinet then there is some morphing edit and some morphing uh, programmed just uh, yeah if you like to know and you can just stop it if you grab the the other parameter and then everything is uh, set to zero then again okay so these are yeah the easy things changing parameters inside one effect module to get two different sounds of one effect module boosting uh, for a lead tone and you can switch on and off some like switching on and off uh, an effect module so uh, yeah again the rig manager you see here i have the wah booster single delay chorus dual delay ionosphere reverb uh, the wah is switched by the mission pedal with uh, switch one and uh, then the booster uh, no the, the the switch from the mission pedal this is effect switch one, effect switch two, single delay, effect switch three, the chorus, and the dual delay with the four. Ionosphere reverb 
is not switched by uh, any switches from the effect uh, switches here on the profiler. I will show you the profiler stage again. So here we are. <clears throat> you see here, booster. Booster off. Uh, I think it's a normal delay, single delay. Chorus. And the delay. This tempo delay. Mm -hmm. Again. <clears throat> so how to switch on and off the reverb which is placed at the delay module here um i need to go back to the rig manager here we are the ionosphere sounds like this <laughs> Easy going. Turning the mix level down is like the effect is switched off. Now, taking the morph sound and turn the effect level. Yeah, I think it was at, at 40. Something like that. switched off and of course rise time fall time oh it's uh, set already at zero so that means i press the morph button it's on and pressing again the morph button you see the morph slider here uh, switches the effect immediately off that means if i have a, a reverb tape it's cut off so um yeah it's sometimes great to have to let's say you have a ending of a song and uh, you have a lush reverb playing at the outro and then kick one and it should be silent this is the way to to cut off the tail of, of an, uh, a reverb or delay especially but sometimes yeah maybe you don't want to have that and then it's good to have this uh, rise and fall uh, set to different uh, per, uh, values so that means going to the rig manager again i have rise time this is the time that it takes when you switch the morphing on so uh, moving to the morph sound in that case it's on zero so the the morph sound comes immediately and with the fall time i set it to let's say two bars 2.1 bars yeah okay so that means now it's off turned on. <laughs> phase out and this is great to have so uh if you know the tempo of the song or you can tap the tempo of the song you can really fade that in a musical way fade the uh reverb tail out with morphing so it's uh great to have there too <clears throat> you can do that with a pedal but uh, if you don't have a pedal or don't like to do it with a pedal you can really set that uh, in a normal common way uh, to have it yeah cut off musically and you you have the the option from uh, yeah just a 16th note or what is the minimum we show yeah it's uh, 16 triplet no, one uh, 64, 64 notes. So uh, a little bit of uh, reverb uh, uh, tail uh, from, from the ionosphere or something like that from, from other effects. 
Yeah, and you can set these parameters per rig, right? Yes, you know, yes. The right and the fall. Everything, so every every morphing parameter. Everything to every track you yeah. you have. Yeah. Yeah. Every morphing uh, parameter is set to to, to uh, one special rig, and uh, you can change that in another rig too. So, but uh, as we said with the with the switches don't do too much confusing stuff you you have the ability to do many things but uh, think about uh, take it easy and uh, not too too much stuff so what what i'm doing uh, often is preparing some uh, effect modules with effects and especially with morphings, maybe some uh, effect level of uh, yeah the, the the intensity of a modulation effect, and if I have switched that particular effect on and off, I can control it with with the pedal. This is fine to have, but uh, yeah, you need to know that you have these uh, options for the pedal and uh, in some situations you're you're doing something and you think oh what's that why is that uh, so loud why is the delay effect so loud so you you need to to know this stuff and maybe write uh, a comment into the the rig name i uh, sometimes do to uh, write an m for for morphing just to to give me the sign hey there's there's some uh, morphing parameters going on mm -hmm. yeah that's true and um i'm just thinking because uh we just got the request that um uh, from an artist who um he's playing the stage and he has uh, the cabinets and stuff uh, a very successful german band and um he found that sometimes he's doing stuff with the audience or with his uh, co-musicians uh, on the other side of the stage. And he has a hard time to be back at, uh, you know, uh, the brain <laughs> on time to to do the switching. So yeah. he was wondering if it was possible for uh, his tech to just uh, um, 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 control the switching, but in a simple way, because usually it's not uh, switching stuff on, it's uh, more about switching stuff off um, mm -hmm. when he's you know, going crazy with the solo, wandering uh, about, and then you have to run back to yeah. switch it off, which could take away the fun of, uh, you know, just having this uh, amazing solo. And uh, with the stage, it's a challenge because uh, you can't just add a remote to the stage, which uh, your tech could use. And okay, you would have to have a full MIDI board, whatever, uh, connected to the stage to have all the stuff all the access to the same um, um, switching. And uh, I thought a simple way could be if um, uh, the crucial parameters, because if it's a solo, it's usually um, boost and a distortion or adding the values of the boost and the distortion. And uh, that could be put onto just one single external morphing switch. So uh, just to engage it, it's just one switching, uh, it's just one switch and to switch it off as well without changing the um, selection from the rig. So can you tell me if, is the morph value the last one stored with a uh, rig in the slot? So for example, if I'm if I'm going to the solo part and um, you engage the morphing mm -hmm. and someone switches back to, I don't know, Rick in the A slot, when that Rick where the morphing was engaged for the last time is engaged again, will it will have the programmed? No, the bass sound, the bass sound, always. It's when always the base so that would be base. so that would be the solution for these guys then because uh, uh, the the tech just needs to solo and uh, oh he's he's not making it <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speaking, uh, switching it off without mm -hmm. changing the base sound of I can show you mm -hmm. so let's say 
Um, we have a booster. With uh, the booster with volume zero is mm. like booster is turned off. Yeah, so turning off the booster. So let me think. <laughs> for and for and, and and if you would even have a distortion after the booster, uh, the the mix level of the distortion would. Um, let's let's take it. Work work in the same way. Uh, we take some clone three booster. So I need to think about. So now mix level. The drive is off, or the sound of the drive is like if it's off. Mm -hmm. um, I need to turn that guy off. And let's say we turn the delay a little bit on for the solo sound. Okay, um, bass sound means delay off. So this is my rhythm sound. Okay, switching to the delay, turning the boost on, drive on, and oh no. <laughs> I was too fast, sorry for that. So we have the rhythm sound. Now, first of all, turning the slider to the morph sound, mm -hmm. booster to the desired value, mix level. I've, I don't uh, adjust the sounds now, mm -hmm. just uh, checking. So, and this, maybe taking some more extra gain from the amp. Why does it do that? Doesn't take the extra gain. Okay. So we, we take the drive. So now when the tech hits the switch, mm -hmm. it's rise and fall time here. Then we have the rhythm sound. And again. Right. That's it. And of course, you uh, need to give that tech an additional switch. No, yeah. just take a long stereo cable. Yeah, take a long, no, you, you don't need a long stereo cable. You just need one uh, for a switch. You only need uh, a mono cable. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. just for one and switch, you just need a sign. Switch. Wait, <clears throat> no. And assign a switch A to yeah. morph. Switch one or so. So um, it's heavy for me to have another oh no yeah, no i have a switch slot but it's okay just to uh, it will take too long to, to no, no, you don't have to it's just, um, just but, show the menu uh, where where this yeah, yeah. It's it will be at number three with my profiler here mm -hmm. so this is not plugged you see it if it would be plugged mm -hmm. It should be set at mono switch mm -hmm. and switch tip to morph. Right. Let's see. Here is it. Yeah, and then it would do the rise and fall of yeah. morphing process. Yeah. And well, you, this, can, this is... you can just have a long, I don't know, five meter, 10 meter. Um, guitar cable and um and the mono switch yeah no, no problem. 
somewhere in the back and you would have the the stage uh, remotely controlled for the most crucial stuff yeah and um, you wouldn't have to you know schlep another midi board with long midi cables and stuff like that so that's a pretty simple and convenient um uh, solution or you could throw uh, uh that cable just at the front of the stage yeah that switch you so switch. your, yeah, your stage where, is you are. where your basic position is on stage and when you're going crazy uh, uh you in, engage the solo and you're doing something up front you just hit hit that one switch and you're back to the normal sound and you can uh conveniently stroll back <laughs> To your position without uh, needing to run, and uh, that's 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 pretty help, helpful as well. And you can do the Kirk Hammett thing as well. You could have uh, three pedals um, or four pedals um, uh, on several positions on the stage as well, and not do only wah like Mr. Hammett does, but you can change the entire world basically yeah. with so and many you- parameters. You can do some nasty things for, for, for the other guitar player <laughs> who's using also a profiler, just morphing, <laughs> morphing the other, uh, his sounds, and he don't, yeah. don't know uh, what, what's going on then. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, if you bring this up, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, back in the day, uh, I was doing uh, um, monitor and uh, FOH sound, uh, you know, for touring. And uh, there was this uh, European tour with the uh, um, Destruction, Rage, and Creator. Oh. Hell Comes Into Town tour uh, back in the day. And uh, I don't know if this is still happening, but uh, usually at the last show of a tour, uh, the crew is uh, trying to create some special challenges for the musicians. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, um, and and I fooled them a little bit. And uh, what we did was, um, you know, there was the drum kit and then the right guitar stacks and the left guitar stacks and the right guitar player and the left guitar player. And we just uh, took uh, we um, took the cables and uh, took them to the other side of uh, the stage because uh, they were hanging at the microphone when they were coming out, uh, mm-hmm. taking the cables and plug in and um, start to play. But then they realized uh, they are not hearing what they are playing behind them from the stack. Uh, it was the other way around. So uh, that was pretty confusing. And uh, we changed that quickly after this was not so easy to, uh, to solve the problem. But now I'm thinking <laughs> you could just uh, change um, the change some, and, some, yeah, and, and create uh, a lot of, uh, the, the, a lot of vocalist, vocalist who can't switch on and off just uh, or switch between some settings not to confuse him uh, maybe to help him uh, take one switch uh, beside you and uh, change some stuff <clears throat> so he has the ability to to communicate with the audience and don't have to think about some sounds yeah that's true and uh, i mean if we're getting into a um, smart uh, stage setup for these days if you have a digital mixer and um, if you want to really get into the nitty gritty things, uh, I think you can, um, you know, via MIDI connect the front of house volume <laughs> with uh, the morphing gain knob and stuff like that and uh, uh not crank uh, your solo tone uh yeah. with the profiler but also uh bring the pa up and stuff like this or um for the pauses in between uh, kill uh, the reverb of, uh, of of the vocal mic for example yeah. things like this so um there's a lot of stuff uh, possible which would uh bear the potential of creating a lot of mess and uh, uh be um a source of a lot of failure but it's all it could be also pretty convenient because uh you can cr- uh, control a lot of thing a lot of things as a band which are usually uh in the hands of some random mm-hmm. foh guy who might have not the best day and yada 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 so uh think about this and um yeah remember switching and morphing uh 
it's a concept and it's an art, which is a part of your arrangement and uh, a part of your performance and find the right style for, for your needs. And as Thomas said, and I say it again, um, even after all these weird uh, suggestions, keep it simple, really yeah. keep it simple. Uh, the most important thing is your playing and uh, you being there for the audience. Everything that distracts you is uh, not, um, not a possible thing, uh, uh, not a posi positive thing. So it's uh, use the technology to help yourself and not to confuse yourself. This is right. my advice. Right. You might confuse the audience. That's fine. But uh, <laughs> yeah. you should never confuse yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well thomas thanks a lot for this um if you haven't anything to add at this point no um, we say again try this at home um it's really important that you get familiar with all this and uh, try to find your your level of um interaction with um the gear you have uh in comparison to your playing because you need to rehearse that not only playing the guitar parts, you also need to rehearse if you're using pedals and switching and stuff like that as well. Sorry. And um, yeah, have a lot of fun with this because there's great stuff you can do that wasn't possible before the Kemper Profiler. And uh, see you next time with uh, some Sondersendung. Morphing uh, the espresso machine on and off or something like that. <laughs> Let's see what we have. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Thomas, thank Bye. you. Bye.